Hey gang, I'm going to attempt to cook my Aunt Helen's Parmesan chicken. It's a simple recipe. I enjoy it. Um, we have it quite often. We usually make it with either pasta or um, mashed potatoes, you know, things like that. Um, it calls for basically eight chicken cutlet breasts or eight breasts of chicken. I usually cut them, cut them into cutlets, but I accidentally grabbed tenders. Um, you're gonna need a half a cup of butter melted, um, half a cup of but uh, of breadcrumbs, which I don't know why I didn't pull them out. I left them in my cabinet, <sighs> and Parmesan, uh, grated Parmesan cheese. Now I'm gonna use. It calls for a half a cup. I'm gonna use a quarter cup granulated and a quarter cup shredded. So, I've already got the uh, butter melted because we all know what melted butter looks like. I might have to just turn it on for a second to make sure it's still warm or melted. I have to start congealing again. So we get our half cup measuring cup. I use plain breadcrumbs. You could use Italian. You can use homemade breadcrumbs. As long as they're nice and fine and coarse like that. Um, cause I don't know how chunky breadcrumbs will work with this recipe. Never tried it. So it's like, you now, if you choose to experiment with various ingredients or flavors that's fine um this is just a the simple recipe that my mom had from i guess when she was growing up i don't know so it's one of those you know we'll stick with the basics we all know what we like if i can get the lids off Alright, the granula, or not the granula, the coarse Parmesan cheese, I guess you'd call these little strips, grated, I don't know, um, won't go in the cup so easily, so use your fingers, kind of guesstimate, I guess you'd say, pour it on top of the breadcrumbs, y'all don't want to see my face, you want to see what I'm doing. If I can get the camera to go down that far. Nope. Alright, it's not going to. Maybe I just have to. Okay, there we go. That's a little better. Might look odd because it's going to be on a weird angle. Uh... Try to make, uh, give it a good level scoop of the palm. The parmesan. Oop. Maybe you line it up just so you can open it better. I don't know. And then some powdered garlic or garlic powder, however you want to put it. Just give it a nice dash to give it some flavoring. I forgot to get a spoon, or not a spoon, a fork. I just kind of mix this together so it's kind of even, even though the granule or the gar uh, yeah, even though the grated parmesan might not be evenly spread, try to do your best. All right, before I start going and coating everything, let's see if I can push this back a little bit, make it a little bit better. Yep. Stuff on my countertop. We're gonna need one extra thing.
cookie sheet. Sheet of tin foil. And, oops, there it is. Good old fashioned cooking spray. Give your tin foil sheet a good coating. One, so it don't burn, and two, when it's halfway through, you can flip it over without too many problems. Let's check my egg. Okay, my egg is still good. Of course, keeping it in the microwave kept it warm. Now you're gonna probably want some napkins or paper towels. This is so you can pat your chicken dry because you don't want wet chicken in your egg batter. All right. I did clean and sanitize my hands before doing this so I'm not worried about using God's tongs, natural tongs, however you want to put it. Okay, once you kind of got your chicken coated, Move it over to your. Now it looks like I won't need to dry this because it's still pretty dry. But should have kept one set of fingers out of the egg batter. But it's okay. So you just kind of flip it over, coat it, pat it. Make sure it's got enough coating on there. Whoops. Should have used bigger plates. I just got some all over my countertop. And then just move it to your tray. I hope I have enough room on this tray because I didn't realize how many tenders I actually have in here. Now, I'm not the brightest cook here. I do my best. But from what I understand, the reason why you want to try your best to make sure your chicken is dry and so it gets a good coating. Otherwise, the coating might not stick. Now, I might end up sprinkling some of this on top just so I have the pieces of Parmesan. Yep, get in there. I guess I didn't pat this one dry enough because it's not coating that well. Oh, I don't know what you are, but you're applying... Oh, right into my butter. Little gnat. some more cleaning later. That's basically what today has been mostly, is cleaning. Oh, that one's got some liquid on it still. There we go. Now, come on. I don't want to use... If you find yourself running low on melted butter or ingredients you can always mix it on or make a second uh, batch or plate full of breadcrumbs and whatnot oh yeah that one's definitely got a lot of butter still make sure you get a good coating everywhere 
and I've got a couple more cutlets. I think I'll be able to get it all on this tray. Luckily, things look like it's going pretty well. Sometimes it doesn't. Now, I don't have a lot of memories of my Aunt Helen. She kind of passed away. Uh, well, I was kind of young at the time. Actually, it was a year, to be honest with you, it was a year before my grandmother passed. And we all said the only reason why Grandma did not live a little bit longer wasn't just the fact that she was a heavy, 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 heavy smoker. It was one of those, from what I understand from the different stories, Grandma and Aunt Helen had a competitive lifestyle. Granted, they were sisters. I, I, yeah, I, they were sisters. Grandma was the one who got married. Aunt Helen stayed a spinster. And when my mom and sister and my mom, well, my mom and her sister, uh, Aunt Sue were growing up when they turned I can't remember what age they were when they turned but they turned a certain age and Aunt Helen who was loaded um, basically said where do you want to go a trip anywhere now I don't know the full story so I'm not going to try to recant it but because of a rivalry of sorts between mom and Aunt Sue They kind of had some bitterness there for a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes it happens. But like I said, I don't remember my Aunt Helen that well because she, she passed away and I didn't get to spend much time with her like my other cousins did, which I have no issues about that. That's just the way things happen. Like I said, my Aunt Helen decided she wasn't going to get married and she had money of one form or another. Money that either A, she made herself or inherited and just knew how to save. And from the stories I hear and whatnot, I wish I had that ability to save money uh, and inherit because I did inherit money from her. But circumstances kind of out of my control made it difficult for me to save. Okay, last piece going on. Just have to pat it dry because I noticed my butter is starting to congeal a little bit. Come on. There we go. Luckily, I had enough butter, just enough butter, and more than enough breadcrumbs. So I'm probably going to sprinkle some of the cheese and leftover goodies onto my pan over here. Get this tray out of the way. Just barely enough room. Alright, let's see. Let me wash my hands real quick. Alright, as you can tell, we have plenty of leftover breadcrumbs and cheese. Now, you can't dump that whole thing onto your pan because then you'll have issues.
Oops, I forgot something. Most important part, which I accidentally forgot, is to put it on for 360. Your oven goes to 360. Now I'm just sprinkling a little bit of this on top of some of these pieces because there's a lot of cheese left over I want in my food. Okay. Whatever breadcrumbs you have left over, you can toss. Uh, mainly because of the fact that you don't want to save leftover contaminated cheese or breadcrumbs. All right. Now, if you let's just if you made the mistake of making two plates of the breading or the coating, this right here, if you didn't use it, you could probably put it in a baggie and save it for next time or another meal, depending on how often you're going to make this. Uh, I will refer to the person in the other room who would know better. But I'm going to steal some of the cheese off of it. Because I didn't mix it yet. There we go. Yep. Get back over here. Now, since I made the mistake of forgetting to put the oven on, we're just going to let this sit as is until the oven comes to temp. Uh, of course, I'm going to take the baking tray off the stove so it doesn't start to par-cook or pre-cook, however you want to put it. And, well, let's see here. I'm going to put it over here. And while I'm waiting... You can watch me clean up a little bit, which, yeah, you don't always get to see me do, because I don't always video record myself. So let's see here. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna put you on my middle table. Hey, babe. Okay, now that I've cleaned up my mess a little bit, the only thing I have to do, which I'll do later with all the other dishes and whatnot, is basically some of the dishes I have. Just a quick, uh, quick, quick. Boy, do I make up some weird words. A Li little tidbit. When, when my aunt Helen passed away, we all went up to, to Missouri, well, 
those of us who didn't live in Missouri anymore, except for my cousin Michelle, went to St. Louis for the funeral and whatnot. And one of the things that was basically opened up to us, um, and what I mean by us is me and my, my cousins, my three other cousins, Michelle wasn't there, Got to basically go and look at a lot of my Aunt Helen's tchotchkes and whatnot and pick and choose for ourselves what we wanted. Well, I had basically said to my my cousins, you guys knew her, her better than I did because I wasn't as close by living wise. So I let them pick and choose. Now, I have since basically either lost or something happened to a lot of the stuff that I got from my aunt, I basically took for myself. Um, aunt Helen was, not only was she loaded basically, but she was a world traveler. She traveled a lot. She's been to places like Bangladesh and Ireland, Scotland, Germany, basically all over Europe. I think she even they even said that she had a trip once down to South America. I can't remember if it was Brazil or Peru, but she was well-traveled. And she had pictures galore of the different places she went to and tchotchkes from various places. And I was the one that went, after I looked at everything, they were like, what did you take? And I said, well, I took a, a few things that she had from India. Cause I don't think I'll ever get to India. And most of the other things were like, been there, seen that, heard about that. And I grabbed, I think I grabbed one or two little, she had a, and at the time I didn't even understand what rosary were, but she had a Celtic cross rosary. And it wasn't, it wasn't really rosary because it wasn't the, the whole necklace. It was like she turned the rosary or the rosary was so old that she made just like a, a bracelet of sorts. But we all got a few different things from her collection of tchotchkes and, and world picked up in, in actual locations and not just some thrift store purchase. Not that there's anything wrong with those. It's just she got it from the actual country or place that are made. And I can't remember if there was anything else, but I know we got like pieces of furniture and things like that that we had to get a U-Haul for. And that was kind of a fun thing because trying to drive, no. Do we have the U-Haul for Aunt Helen or Grandma? No. It was Mom and Dad got the U-Haul for Grandma and drove back with the U-Haul. We had a little white Toyota pickup truck with stuff in the back end besides what we brought. <clears throat> so we didn't really get the furniture until after Grandma passed away. Now I'm telling you this because of fact that my memories of my Aunt Helen are few and far between because I didn't live in St. Louis all my life. I didn't, um, the closest we ever lived to St. Louis was when my father was stationed at, uh, the air base down in Little Rock. I don't remember, I don't remember the name of the air base. But we were in Arkansas for three years, for three and a half to four years. Uh, mid seventies to, to like right before 80. Okay, I'm not sure if, I forgot to look at the time. Let me go get my cookbook so I can look at the time. Your little uh, signage by the cookbook's still over. Okay. 
one of the downsides of trying to put things away early is you might forget some information. So, this is my other pair. Of, I've got multiple pairs of glasses. Somebody uh, commented about, oh, do you have new glasses uh, from the office? Yeah, I have a new set of glasses in the office, but I think I'm going to have to go back to the other pair I had, which... Um, yeah, which magnified better. Bake for one hour, yikes, and it's almost seven. So let me put this in the oven. Now I set it for 30 minutes because in 30 minutes I'm going to come in here, check it, flip it, and then start planning for the other parts of the meal. <coughs> Excuse me. Which I will try to remember to record. So until then, this is a temporary... Well, I'm not even going to say goodbye. I will come back in 30 minutes and check this. I'm not going to leave this recording up. Just a little update. I just got done talking to the master chef, as I want to call it sometimes. Um, that hour bag time was wrong. The hour bag time is for whole chicken breast, not cutlets. So it's actually supposed to be 30 minutes in total. So I reset my timer for, for 10 minutes. She said 15. Ah, oh boy. Okay, there we go. Sorry, 15 minutes, and then I'm going to come back in and check it and flip it, and then do another 10 minutes. So, I'm glad I talked to her before I, you know, ruin dinner. Anyhow, let's continue on. All right, we're nearing the halfway point, and I've already got the... Rice aroni. Oh, where's my lid? And broccoli started. And it's almost time to flip everything. So let's see if I can just angle this down. Still haven't learned all my equipment. So I can hear the water boiling for the broccoli. And alrighty. Let's see if I can do this. If everything goes to plan, then all should be done in 15 to 20 minutes, if not sooner. But I have my timer set. Everything is cooking good. Let's check my recipe. That's going good. Rock was starting to steam. We're doing good. All right, gang. Uh, broccoli's done. The Rice aroni is almost done. So I'm about ready to do something a little creative. Jerry suggested, and I went, oh, that sounds great. Oh, yeah. That's definitely done. So Jerry suggested taking... Garlic. 
Yeah. So we're going to be taking a few extra ingredients. Oops, I need. So that's going to be done before I'm done. It's all right. It's just the way things are. I'm going to take a. Let's see if I can do this. Saucepan, a little bit of olive oil, some butter once I get it unwrapped. I'm turn that to medium low. Come on, of course when I'm in a rush, everything wants to basically be a problem child. Get in there. Check my chicken real quick. Yeah. I'll turn everything off, but I'll leave it in there just to slow cook. Take some butter, slap it in that pan so it all starts to melt. garlic nice and coated. And please don't ask me to try to flip food. Alright, that's all done. Um, now the fun part. I start calling in the troops. Somebody want to come and uh, touch the table? Butter knives and fork or, or steak knives?
Yeah. She smelt it, she smelt it. Bring something to the table, honey? Yeah, you want to grab the uh, broccoli and then, yeah. or somebody yes. can grab broccoli, somebody can grab the rice and once I'm done. Okay. No man left behind. Thank you. Sorry. I just thought I would help. I didn't know you were still coming. No, that's alright. Hey, all the help, all the better. Okay. Here, go ahead. I'll leave you. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. make my, my father proud. I use a ton of dishes. Yes, please. Oh. <laughs> Let's take a ride. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can pop you guys out of the. Yep. Yeah, I made a boo-boo. I grabbed the wrong thing.